numbers increasing, but a lot of people just wait because of. Uh, so fair enough. We are on on the go now. We are recording. It's it's fantastic. And that moment will give us just a couple of more minutes. It's uh, the only thing with Google uh, Meet is there is always a ting button. I think the notification still can be off from your end, the admins, if you can. But otherwise, we'll keep hearing the little ting sound as we speak. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, everybody out there, one again, a warm welcome. And uh, Shazia, ma'am, the host is out here. So, I think we just we are good school. We start on time. We end up on time. Over to you, Shazia, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank everyone for joining this session. And I hope that you will take back a lot of insight after this session and be a better parent, teacher, and educator for our kids. Today, I will use this platform to introduce our first speaker of the day, Ms. Nagma Sheikh. She wears a lot of hats, but to mention few, she has been teaching CAIE English language and literature for 29 years. She was associated with Arab Unity School, Dubai, and Vibgyor High in Goregaon. She is the MISA mentor for English teacher training session. She has received many awards for all her endeavors, such as the ISA Coordinator Award twice, the e Dust, and the Nation Builder Award twice. She is the first gold level panelist of the worldwide Cambridge panel and one of the judges for the Cambridge International Dedicated Teacher Award last year. She has been associated with JBCN International in Mumbai as a part-time A-level English teacher from 2017 to this date. She says, that teaching is her calling and passion. She believes it's a beautiful, collaborative, and lifelong journey of the learning. So here we have our Nagma ma'am. Over to you, ma'am. The floor is yours. All right. Hello and good evening. So I will be introducing you to the Cambridge IGCSE as well as the A-level curriculum. Uh, the type of subjects that you get, what is this curriculum all about, what is the support that uh, you know teachers and parents receive from Cambridge International and so on and so forth. So first and foremost, I would like to welcome you all and I have 15 minutes so within that I would just like to say a few things that first and foremost uh, Cambridge International is a very transparent board. You won't believe that the courses which were open to teachers earlier, you know, where teachers could be professional development. They are also open to parents now. I hope some of you are aware of that. So for example, for homeschoolers, if parents are also keen on helping their uh, you know, children do well, they could also take up these face-to-face -face and online courses. Uh, how many of you are aware of this? Was anyone aware? Okay, so I'm just telling you that this was you know, thrown open by Cambridge. And I think it's a fantastic development. Uh, because unlike the IBDP where, you know, in order to be trained, you have to be a teacher in a particular IBDP school or, you know, your Cambridge is so very uh, open to, you know, uh, sharing uh, what it is all about that even those teachers who are not in any particular IGCSC or A-level or CAI school can sign up for these courses, can register for these courses and can, uh, you know, learn and believe me open to parents as well so parents can also learn and help their children all right uh first and foremost let me uh, is it okay if i share something on the screen will i be able to share yes ma'am yes you will all right so i'll just share uh what is the cambridge igcse all about so one moment let me share all right so here i'm going to share and just quickly take you through the Cambridge IGCSE. If there are any questions, you can post them in the chat box. 
I am willing to answer them. And as I already informed Mr. Dawu, Ms. Christina, and Ms. Shazia, that if there are questions that I may not be able to answer you immediately, I will do more research. I will find out from the other experts, and I will get back to you. Okay. So let us begin with the sharing. Is my screen clear? I mean, are you able to see my screen, people? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Good. So if you look at what over here it says Cambridge IGCSE and it's talking about a curriculum that is worldwide. Uh, Cambridge IGCSE was begun more than 30 years ago. In fact, you won't believe teachers. The first time when I went to the UAE and I began teaching uh, the Cambridge curriculum, I was informed that my school had changed from O level to IGCSE, from GCSE to IGCSE. So IGCSE is around 30 years old. It is catering to the international, uh, you know, students, all right, worldwide. And that is why IGCSE. So earlier, O level or GCSE was what was taken up. But now very few schools offer GCSE outside of the UK because IGCSE is the international curriculum, well suited to students all over the world, as you can see. And it's for 14 to 16 year old, old uh, students, all right. And of course, the standards are aligned, as mentioned over here, with the GCSE qualifications taken in the UK. So O level is mostly confined to the UK now. All over the world, people are taking up IGCSE. So what is the curriculum all about? I'll just quickly show you what the curriculum is all about. So you can see that it's a curriculum which is application-based. Based. Subject content is very crucial. Uh, it leads students to intellectual inquiry, you know, opening up their minds, thinking outside of the box, thinking that there's really no box that can, confines or constrains them. Uh, it's also about being very flexible to what is happening around the world. You will see the textbooks are changed almost, you know, say every three years or five years because IGCSE believes in being, you know, keeping abreast of what is happening. So sometimes, of course, the entire textbook doesn't change, but the, the new edition is brought forth, which has all what is happening newly in the world. So it's a curriculum that is not waiting like other curriculums, you know, where after 10 years and 20 years, they may change a book and the next book is even more regressive than the previous book, you know. So rather than being aligned with the times, the, the, the textbooks are actually behind the times. But IGCSE textbooks, which are known as course books, which also have workbooks that go hand in hand to enhance students, uh, uh, you know, learning. They are very, very modern, you know, and that is why you will see many editions uh, one after the other coming out. Uh, the, the, the focus, of course, is on working and communicating in English. So obviously, it's a board which will be found in more than 160 countries, 106 countries all over the world. And therefore, the medium of instruction, the medium of communication is English. Uh, cultural awareness is something that is a strong point of the IGCSE. It calls itself culturally free and fair. And being an English teacher, I can vouch for this. You know, one year, if the focus is on, say, Egypt in the English papers, the next year, the focus is on Sri Lanka, then the next year, it's on India. You know, you know, uh, uh, we are, when we are talking about the fiction part of it, or when we are talking about extracts, so it is actually exposing our children to the entire world, respect and uh, mutual awareness and tolerance for the rest of the world. You know, So making them world ready, you know, making them citizens of the world, then uh, it really influences their learning outcomes, what we want our children to, uh, you know, do. So the next part that I would be looking at uh, would be the subjects. So this is one board which actually, if you if you looked at the previous slide, it said over here clearly that we, you know, the IGCSE offers 70 subjects, including 30 languages. So this is such a diverse board. No other board in the world will offer you 70 subjects and 30 languages. Of course, we are talking about schools where schools will have limitations and constrictions. They cannot offer 70 subjects, right? Because we need to have takers. Like if there, I mean, most schools have this rule that if there are more than five students, then the subject could be 
given or if there are 20 students depending on the rules because logistically otherwise if a school is offering uh, 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 Ms. Asna that's a good question we'll try to make this available to you in the form of a PDF or a PPT I'll be speaking to Mr. Dawood we'll do that don't worry uh, so Mr. Dawood, Ms. Christine and Ms. Shazia if you can make a note of this we could get back to Ms. Asna and anyone else with this. Yes, yes. So, so if you observe, there are 70 subjects. Let's show you the 70 subjects that are available. I mean, it's like a real an A to Z of subjects, you know, right from accounting to chemistry to combined sciences. Of course, to English, we have a number of English subjects, first language, second language, and so on. We've got literature. We also got English as an additional language, but uh, parents, let me tell you one thing, please do not take up English as an additional language because it's very basic English. It's very, very basic English. I've seen the books. I have trained uh, teachers because I'm a Cambridge University press trainer. So I train people all over India and I'm also training teachers in America for a level. So uh, this, uh, uh, this is a new subject, sounds exciting, but it's basically been introduced for the you know for for places where english is a third fourth fifth language got it india we have a legacy where we english is almost like a first language for us in many countries english is almost like a first language because of the dominion of you you know britannia when it ruled us when, when the british ruled so we do not really need to take this up this is mainly for countries yes uh all right yes mr dawu thank you for mentioning that core and extended have been discontinued this is the last exam this exam may 23 was the last exam and of course november 23 these are the last exams where we have core and extended in english so it's all going to be merged uh, all right so thank you thank you uh, mr dawood for answering that uh, so yes there is no core and extended earlier we had core and extended we'll discuss that also so there are a number of subjects in india and all over the world, to be honest, minimum five subjects need to be taken up as such, because especially in India, because you know that if your children wish to do HSC, then you need the best of five marks, right? So minimum of five subjects uh, uh, need to be taken up. Ms. Hina, you can post the question in the chat box because I have a few minutes left. So I'd like to complete what I have to say, but I'd surely take your question. Uh, but maximum people can take nine subjects, 10 subjects. I mean, schools are offering up to 10 subjects, certain schools. But, uh, oh, okay, foreign universities, Mr. Indrajit, I will answer, to be very honest, uh, in certain countries, students still need to do the ILTS, right, for visa purposes. So if students have taken up ESL, which may not be accepted in certain countries, all the students have to do is do your ILTS, but in Canada, second language is not really accepted. So if you want your children to enroll in Canadian universities, maybe the child has to do first language English or later on, you know, do ILTS so that that would help for the visa process. Okay, Ms. Mr. Indrajit, I hope that has helped. Uh, now we go on to uh, another, uh, you know, I'm, I'm stopping this share. I'm quickly going to go to A level because we have just five minutes left. I don't want to be, you to miss out on that. Uh, yes, ILTS is needed in most uh, universities, as Mr. Dawood has specifically mentioned. And in fact, it's also needed for visa purposes in certain, certain countries. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so please uh, make a note of that. Now I'm going to quickly take you through the A and AS levels. Uh, teachers, uh, sorry, students who do CAIE, IGCSE have no issues. I mean, colleges in India, HSC will take them up. Okay, don't worry at all because they have to do HSC, they have to just, you know, fill up the form, right? And over there, they will only say English. They are not asking first or second language. So absolutely fine. Even if your child has done FESL, the, you just have to give the marks for English and they will get through. So that's why many parents prefer, many schools prefer, so that, you know, because in ESL, they feel there'll be more, uh, uh, you know, marks and better chances of getting into a college. Ms. Hina, kindly post your question in the chat box. Otherwise, I'll take it later, ma'am. If you look at A-level, uh, it is a natural progression from, uh, you know, IGCSE. But let me tell you, IGCSE and A-level, there's a huge difference. Uh, A-level is very rigorous. But believe me, A-level is something that will set your children for life. 
children who do A level and then they go abroad for studies, they don't find much difficulty. Children who do A level uh, and want to take up, you know, their undergraduation in India, they also don't face many difficulties. I've had uh, uh, teachers and professors in colleges who tell me that compared to IBDP, you know, the A level students can write better and more focused answers at undergraduate level in uh, in uh, in the Indian universities. But even in foreign universities, they will not face issues because A level is so rigorous. It's the gold standard, you know, it's been there from years. So if you look at the A-level curriculum, again, very in-depth, it promotes independent thinking, application, information and data handling, uh, you know, makes them, make students ready to be very coherent and offer their arguments well, uh, you know, researched and so on. We also have something called the IPQ, which is like a 5,000 uh, word research answer, which is really coming uh, into focus, you know, and, and that can even help students to get into the best of universities if they have the IPQ, the additional, uh, you know, qualification. Of course, English is very, very important. That is understood. There is a choice of 55 subjects, as you can see. Once again, I would like to praise the CIE for offering so many uh, because of the way the demands of the world are. Mr. Dawood, can I speak for just two more minutes, sir? Is it fine? Um, please, please go on. Take five minutes. I think we are here to hear you. Okay, <laughs> five minutes. Fair enough. I'll try to complete. So uh, at A level, you know, there's a choice of 55 subjects. So as compared to any other board, you will agree that the CIE, the Cambridge International, uh, okay, is it easy for homeschoolers to give all levels? So, Miss Novera, to be very honest, when do you when you have IGCSE, which is the international one, why do you want to do all level, which is GCSE and which is con, you know confined now to the UK? I would suggest you think of IGCSE, and yes, it is easy for homeschoolers. I personally have taught homeschoolers for A level. Because A-level English is very, very tough. So I've had homeschoolers who've not joined any school and they've actually got A in English, you know, all right. Now, first and foremost, Miss Nuren, yes, Cambridge O-level offers fewer options. Very good, Mr. Dawood. Thank you for supporting me. Now, Mr. Asim uh, is asking uh, that whether Miss Nuren did main English or there is no second language in A-level, okay? Mr. or Miss Asim, whoever it is, there in A level, there is no concept of core or extended and no second language. A level is the gold standard core, uh, you know, course. It is very, very rigorous. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. And there are, but there are options. You can take up 9093, which is the literary one. But believe me, I've had homeschoolers who've got A there also. All students can now take up the English general paper. So, you know, mostly science students, those who want to do NEET and IIT, they feel that they need to spend more time on science and math and they don't have much time for, uh, you know, English. So they take up what is called A021 English general paper. And in India, it is much preferred by students who want to do NEET and IIT and so on. 9093 is very challenging. Only 5% of students get an A. And believe me, I've got a good result, I know. But it's very, very much of hard work. We know how much we have to work hard. Okay, so keep that in mind. So once again, let me get back to the curriculum. Uh, and there are 55 subjects as we discussed. It's a two-year course. And these are all the various subjects that students can take up. So to be very honest, in the UK, because I have loads of relatives there, you know, so we, 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 we are from like Daman and also we have the Portuguese connection for so the entire village is there. So the point is students do only two subjects at A level in the UK. But in India, we cannot limit students to two subjects because many of them would like to do their NEET, their G, and they would like to go for colleges in India. So we need at least four subjects, all right? So either they take three commerce or three science subjects and then one English, of course, is compulsory. To be very honest, at A level, no subject is compulsory. In IGCSE, English is compulsory, but in A level, no subject is compulsory. So people in the UK, many of them don't even take up English. I know hundreds of students, they have not taken up English. But in India, there is an English qualification needed. Okay, parents, 
whether they want to do IIT, they want to do NEET, they want to do a normal, you know, undergraduate course uh, in college, an English grade is required, an English mark is required. So in India, it's compulsory. And therefore, in fact, I'm one of the people who worked hard to bring about 8021 for Indian students who may not wish to take up 9093. So as I was showing you, we can take a look. There's so many, many, uh, you know, choices, 55 subjects, number of languages that students can take up. And we have, you know, very, very, uh, you know, uh, stud, you know, subjects like media studies, so modern in their approach. All right. We also have art and design and law. And I mean, there's no end to it. Now, as far as homeschoolers appearing for these exams is concerned, you have quite a few schools which are willing to permit homeschoolers to appear for these exams as external candidates. Sometimes the schools may charge a small amount. Mr. Daul, I'll just take one more minute if you don't mind, sir. So sometimes the schools may charge, sure. yeah, may charge a small amount for their services, which I think is to be understood. And um, uh, one thing is there that if your children want to do a level physics chemistry and biology this is where yeah as means so so as is advanced studies ma'am okay oh see earlier o level was ordinary level and a was advanced level okay now we have igcse and a level so as is grade 11 where some of the subjects papers you can do in grade 11 like half the papers and the other half you can do in grade 12. So AS is grade 11 and A is grade 12. Is that understood, Miss Asna? Can we have a thumbs up so that we know that you've understood? So AS is grade 11, A is grade 12. Like for example, say for example, uh, if they're doing a subject, so they'll do paper one and two in grade 11, paper three and four in grade 12. But CAIE also gives you the choice that the child can do all four papers at the end of grade 12, okay? So that choice the student, the school has to make. Ha, so I was just telling you about physics, chemistry, biology. Mr. Daud, I'll end with this. That if students want to take up physics, chemistry, and biology in A-level, then you will have to, or in IGCSE, if they are taking up English, you know, second languages where they require the speaking exam, then you will have to speak to the school from where your child is to give the exam whether they can offer this support got it whether they can offer support like do, do they have teachers who can do the speaking exam for your child do they have a good laboratory because for a level the laboratory has to be well equipped all right there's a long list of equipment that CAI sends and schools have to equip themselves so you will have to first ensure that you go to a school which has that if your child is doing physics chemistry biology at a level and if they are doing second language at IGCSE, okay? So I hope this has helped. Thank you so much. Uh, if there are any questions or anything, we'll take them up later. Thank you, Mr. Dawood, Ms. Christina, and Ms. Shazia. Thank you, uh, everyone. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Nagma, ma'am. Uh, now we'll introduce our second speaker of the day, who is Dr. Dawood Wade. He's a mindset coach an educationist and a quizzer. He is an uh, electronic engineer, MA in education, and he has done MBA. He has left his lavish career as a patent attorney in Switzerland, Moscow, and Dubai to work on SDG and skill workshop. He has authored the book called Education Riddle. He heads an online e-school and sustainable academy. Golden Sparrow Hub Schooling, and its headquarter is at Navi Mumbai. He loves horses, quizzing, and travel. So here we have Dr. Dawood White. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, honestly, everybody, there is no better joy than being introduced by a wife. You know, she's forced to say good things about you. So that's a, that's a good part about these online webinar while we were in the same house in two different rooms. Thank you so much, Shazia, ma'am. You've been a blessing. And, and this has been your initiative to create a homeschoolers tribe, a community. And yes, Nagma, uh, you see the humor in it, but absolutely, I see an amazing part in your session. I would have loved to just hear you out because you are an expert here, ma'am. And uh, you know, the way you were quoting numbers, it's like how you have uh, phone numbers of people. 
you know your subject so thank you so much for an awesome program and hopefully you know stay back for a lot of questions would come again my role here perhaps is a very uh, honest assessment of where we stand uh, the idea of doing the entire program together is what we do with our students what the teenagers so many selfies so little knowledge of self sometimes being unaware is not an excuse of not going ahead a lot of us as homeschoolers are unaware of the options or the choices we have you know do we have help for uh, as a private candidate can i apply where do i apply how do i search homeschoolers i always say are very fierce are very independent and are very passionate the very qualities that make a homeschooler sometime also makes us very egoistic to ask for help it's like men would never roll down the windows and ask for direction and somehow we get lost this is a time we need to put our prejudices away there are experts out there you know uh, you know not just the wonderful people i invited and they were so gracious stella ma'am nagma ma'am but a participant nurain ma'am you know she's been putting some inputs and so encouraging to see students or past students coming up and telling that yes help is available look for help so my role here is to introduce cambridge a little more holistically as a home schooler not as academically and what options are available for us as home schoolers in terms of learning pandemic has been a game changer in education it showed us that you do not need classrooms to learn you need a will to learn there was a whole concept of hybrid schooling the idea was and perhaps you know i was doing a statistics in the morning and i, I you know i'll save you the the details of the data but the idea was 15 1.5 million people opted to homeschool post pandemic which is a huge number and 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 the research says it's just 10% of the parents choosing to do so perhaps the transparency perhaps the idea that we can still learn you know it does not mean what we always say homeschooling does not mean that you just do not teach or you know you you are the only teacher the child has i mean please save the child the 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 ignomy of you being the principal the math teacher the science teacher the uh, martial arts teacher the english teacher that's not homeschooling homeschooling is a idea of structured learning so we find out what is available for us we find out what are the options as as somebody said you know reaching out to nagma ma'am to do a batch for a level english she is an expert out there oh by the way you should ask about shakespeare's to her and, and you know this is the quality we have got there there are teachers for maths there are teachers for global perspective a subject i'll speak about so this is what i wanted to introduce you to that the world is changing are we catching up as much as we say that system is not meant first do not try to change the system reinvent your ways you know the woods are lovely dark and deep idea make your own path and find out but ultimately you still need to go to a board it could be cambridge nios a proponent that i am so fond of idea you still need to prepare a child how to write an examination if they not if they do not know the pattern of a question paper it is it is an impediment to their going ahead so this as an idea is what we are focusing on i'll be focusing on three aspects in the in the in the next 10 minutes that, that i'm talking to you number one is of course golden sparrow is making an attempt to create a tribe as much as we are trying to say there is an online school available that's offering a program but the program is not necessarily a, a idea that you must join irrespective you know i would love for you to be a part of the system but irrespective make a program ask questions the right questions will give us right answers do we have structured learning you know it's like an example where you you know that you can make pizzas at home uh, does pizza hut make better pizzas than my wife i dare say no right i would rather never ever do that but does it mean it prevents me from going outside and having a, a restaurant meal that's exactly what we're saying ask for structured help so you don't become the only teacher a child is exposed to if you are only enjoying maths perhaps your child is missing out on language or a skill that they should be learning that is where a structured online schooling becomes a support system for a program like cambridge or at further level nios i think uh, nagma ma'am that such amazing justice that it even looks uh, you know uh, uh, silly to even share the pathway but that's what cambridge pathway is all about perhaps i'm just repeating what we already started with there is a cambridge primary program it starts at a very early age corresponding to grade 1 of our age but actually cambridge checkpoints for the early stage stage 1 is actually something you should be mapping for pre primary is your child ready at this particular age 
then we go to the second stage which is cambridge lower secondary so right now your child is still in school you understand the idea that we're looking at cae the assessment will come from the upper secondary part which is what we spoke about igcse so forget o levels now right o levels is in bangladesh o levels in sri lanka but india we've almost moved towards entirely igcse igcse is an examination name if you look at the idea 70 plus choice of subjects trust me sometimes it's overwhelming i only need seven so so let's say you got the best seven shots for your examination at grade right 10 now this is grade 10 what cambridge also does is there are checkpoints at a lower stage and and please correct me nagma ma'am if I'm, I'm wrong there's a checkpoint at grade three there's a checkpoint at grade five and there's a checkpoint at grade eight is that correct so this is a checkpoint is an assessment that cambridge does for you to know are you igcse ready or not now what i love about nis and i'm, I'm sorry i'm diverting a little nis perhaps for some reason also follow the same path this is called obe nis they have got checkpoints at three five and eight level and then there's this nis the board so the same way cambridge has checkpoint checkpoints you know of course now for a lot of schools they may not pay for a checkpoint so they have internal experts and they are very good teachers who can do a checkpoint and, and that's fine with cambridge cambridge doesn't insist it's not mandatory but checkpoints are a good indicator of where you stand so if you're homeschooling your child you know i would advise you because you're doing it all alone if you're not taking external help go to an expert or teacher said can you help my child prepare a checkpoint paper and maybe i'll do an internal assessment post the checkpoint you're prepared and ready for igcsc which is you know which is a grade 10 level then you go to as and a levels which is 11th and 12th and then you have amazing options one thing i admire about cambridge is cambridge listens you know earlier i i should have uh, I sh i'll speak about this a little later but earlier the exams were only held once and the results would be much delayed the students were you know uh, students were this you know handicapped because the other boards would have early declaration and the colleges would be full cambridge is a learning system uh, which is admirable they understood india had needs a different thing the exam started having at two different time april and october the results come at a right time and you can break your exams let's say you write few exams in october you write few in april a combined mark, mark sheet comes in and you apply for colleges this is this is the beauty of cambridge as a program uh, just a snapshot of what are the choice of subjects so you choose one one or two from each of them so group one you can take english yeah, efl as ma'am said uh, global english is, is option there you have uh, but ideally uh, english as second language was another choice and uh, anagma ma'am who better than that and it was a problem when you used to go with english as second language uh, this was english only but it was non native english that's what it meant and and the colleges did not understand this okay english is the second language what's your first language so no english is no it's written english as second language they changed the word to global english so cambridge listens cambridge adopts and cambridge does some amazing work with it you can have choices of language b hindi french english this is just an option a school is giving this is not a comprehensive list the list is what nagma ma'am showed on the website you've got you've got combined uh, sciences you've got uh, mathematics additional mathematics you've got business studies arts and design i mean the group is absolutely exceptionally large then there are optional subjects ideally in igcse what i have seen some schools i've worked with few schools as, as a consultant they take up a, a a cohort of seven subjects five to uh, four to five are compulsory but they take up seven subjects it helps you aids you in the kind of scoring that you get so you know this is just a list it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a very old list for a particular student so they took efl and there was maths and physics and chemistry biology all the three sciences geography mandarin so this is a school that said you can take these ICT business studies few. I mean, that's that's a lot of studies out there. But as a parent, you know the choices are there. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, Nagma ma'am, I, I, I stand uh, corrected because there's stage six checkpoint diagnostic stages and there's a stage nine, which is grade eight in India. Absolutely fair enough. So this is beautiful. Ear market, uh, you know, if there's a, something in a chat that you find very relevant, copy it and it'll be very useful. And, and thank you, Indrajit ma'am. Yes, uh, these are, these are I know, pro-Cambridge people and I, I am one of them. The progression tests are very, very useful. No doubt about it. And also what happens is they're not mere tests. 
they also indicate of what areas we need to focus on what areas we lack in this is my favorite slide the reason being i i i sincerely you know this is this is such a comprehensive program it's free you download it from the cie website what i'm talking about are the learning outcomes i am board agnostic uh, in golden sparrow when we teach online we do follow uh, multiple boards but we follow religiously we follow cambridge learning outcomes the reason being the outcomes are so defined they're so evolved so you you know if you if you're looking at level 2 you know what are you expecting from each unit you know what you expect in phonics you know what you expect in grammar you know what you expect in literature it is so purposeful it is so clear and that is why one of the areas we work on when we do an online schooling we say this is a structured program that we as parents might help you know as a father of three daughters i realize i can't do everything alone so i went online and i found some amazing teachers there is anubhuti ma'am in lucknow there is uh, any ma'am in pune now you know we have we had teachers from goa to surat the idea was these were experts who were willing to for some reason they said okay we don't want to go regular school they are the ones who are teaching now and this is a selection of some curriculum books we picked up for this year this academic year so we use cup as a standard program and this are the learning outcomes you will get when you become a part of a structured program uh, they are endorsed by cambridge remember this is not cup is a different publication you can always study cambridge without the books good teachers will say we don't need them i mean ask ask some other better teachers they say no no we don't need these books but for the layman for the beginner level or the intermediate level this is what we do in golden sparrow these are the curriculum that i recommend i follow uh, these are the early start of course there is this oxford's uh, geography so the idea is you pick and choose what suits you and you start learning at a different level you will apply certain skills so you know as a home school one of the challenges that we found is i i don't know how to teach science uh, at 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 a checkpoint level there is help available and that's why i said do not be shy for help if your child can study a structured program for 3 hours in the morning and then you can apply as a private candidate why not you can go to the music classes you can go to some of the martial arts some sports some hobby class later in the day and that is what a fulfilling curriculum is about homeschooling is need not be you are alone in the universe homeschooling means you aid you take help one of the subjects i am i'm absolutely amazed maybe cambridge wanted to come with something for tok with ib has theory of knowledge is a is a concept called global perspective i have a couple of more minutes to wind up now my host will tell me one of the things we very strongly believe uh, by 2030 every organization will do an audit and a check your resume must have sdg awareness these are 17 sustainable goals by united nations and i'm so proud of a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, you know boosting is fine enough in from india in the pandemic three students were selected by united nations world largest lesson and two of them were golden sparrow students uh, i'm a big uh, big advocate of the sdg remember greta thunberg the little girl from sweden who bunk schools yeah we welcome all of you who want to bunk school and join golden sparrow sdgs are an integral part of a program like us So what happens in a virtual school? You get access to some of the best quality teachers. There are a lot of activities. So we had we had guests from Holland to Mexico. Someone who only spoke Spanish, but students were so amazed at the at the level of his depth of of SDG goals. They liked it. Some of them said we want to pick up Spanish. I think Barcelona is the reason, not really. Uh, I know Nagma Ma'am is a Man U fan, and I see her scores all around. Uh, there is an academic program, a student-led program, and then there are these baseline and diagnostic tests that we will keep doing on. uh since we spoke a little bit about the exams i'm skipping the exam part but this is a grading level uh, the core and the extended if you have question ask we have got experts who will answer what is core or what is extended what grades you get you get a stars and a's and then at a, at a, at a core level you have a different grading in golden sparrow very quickly grade 1 to 8 we follow the cambridge learning outcome these are how our report cards look like we also offer a uh, transfer certificate so in case let's say you want to take a gap year you study online and you want to go to physical school you get the learning uh, you get the transfer certificate so you can join a regular school and our students are all animal so we have koalas and polar bears and finger monkeys but when you want to go on board for an igc exam we would ask you to go for a private school and this is the beauty of it go to cambridge website there is a there is a section which says find a cambridge school 
until grade eight, you have all the exams are internal. Ninth and tenth, Golden Sparrow offers NIOS, which is absolutely brilliant. I mean, not because uh, my daughter did NIOS and she's doing very good. So, so that is a, a subject I vouch for. But because it is a Cambridge assessment, you look at a Cambridge school near you, and you could be anywhere. You could be Nagpur, you could be in Kolkata, you could be in Chennai, Mumbai. Find a school, go to a list called private candidates. So you will find a lot of Cambridge school, JBCN for example, uh, RIMS for example, Grandia for example. But are they accepting private candidates? So go to a section called private candidates. I'll share the presentation if you wish. It will be shared on the the same homeschoolers group. And in that private candidate, you can still appear if the school is accepting you. All you need to do is find that school. For example, a school I'm I'm consulting called the Grandia International School in Bangalore. Uh, we got affiliation two years back. Now they accept private candidates. So there you are. If you're in Bangalore, this is your go-to school, right? Uh, so there's a there's a there's a very renowned school, the the International School Bangalore. It does not accept. So you need to know which schools are accepting in your area, and you need to go there. They will charge you an X amount of fees. Cambridge course itself will have an X amount. You know, I'm roughly giving a transparent idea. Let's say seven thousand rupees per examination. So if you're choosing seven subjects, you're paying forty nine thousand rupees. A school might say, okay, you may need to pay another twenty five, forty thousand. You know. Let's be transparent. That's an amount the school will charge you, so you will end up paying a lakh for being a private candidate in a particular school. That's roughly the amounts that are being charged. Uh, if you offer an online school, uh, because we speak about fees and amount, this is a golden sparrow fee for the entire academic year, uh, one to ten. But until eight, it's a Cambridge Learning Outcome. Grade nine and ten, we go to NIOS. You can take a snap snapshot of it. I'll share this in the screen. But the idea is. Can education be accessible to everybody? Uh, we have tied up with Google for education, so you see a lot of G Suite, including the drives and the meets and the classes. But the concept is you aren't alone. We have removed the boredom out of board exam. It could be a CBSC, an NIS, a Cambridge board. Do not be afraid to ask the right questions. Experts are more than happy, very generous to answer you, and that's the whole idea of making the homeschoolers community. You can always take a snapshot of this picture. Reach out to Shazia, ma'am, Christina, ma'am, me, anybody from the Golden Sparrow team with any question, and hopefully we can give a solution to it. Uh, thank you so much for patient listening, uh, Asna, ma'am. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, the Grandio also has a has a UAE branch. Hopefully, Golden Sparrow will follow. There are some wonderful people I know. And any question, don't direct to me. It's Nagma, ma'am. But meanwhile, we have got our guest all the way from London. I don't know if she's sitting in Heights Park. Stella, ma'am, uh, are you there? And Shazia, ma'am, over to you. Thank you so much. Hello. God bless. So, thank you, Dawood Bhai, for your uh, share for sharing insights with us. Uh, yes. So, our third speaker for the day is Stella Jenskin, who has almost traveled half of the world to share her insight with us. Uh, just, uh, just sorry, I'm just intruding, Stella, ma'am. Your voice is still breaking, perhaps. And uh, Shazia, ma'am, uh, you wanted to add something odd for Stella, yes. ma'am, as well. Go ahead. Yes, definitely. Uh, she is born and raised in London, and have completed the English mainstream schooling system up to the master level. She says she is a full-time mother. She does not have time to pursue her personal hobbies anymore. But love to travel as much as possible with her children to help them experience the best that this world has to offer, and to learn from other fascinating cultures and histories. She has sent us the list of places she has visited, and believe me, the list is long, from North America to Greece to Cyprus to Egypt to Iceland and Finland, and much more. She has done following activities as a traveler. And that list is also long. She says that she has flown a single-engine aeroplane, snow sledging, scuba diving, Canadian canoeing, and much, much more. So here we have our third speaker, Stella Jenskin. Uh, Stella, the floor is yours. Calling just uh, Stella, ma'am, we cannot hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, hear much clearer. 
Okay, I'll have to hold you a bit closer. Okay. Um, just to say I am no expert in terms of all of this homeschooling. I'm very new to it, but I'm hoping to homeschool my soon-to-be 11-year-old from September. Uh, that's when she will be starting technically secondary school over here. Um, and um, basically, I am... Um, I, my daughter has been through the primary school education in the UK um, and I, it's, it's OK, but I don't really feel that it's pushed her to her her best that she could be. I have to say from when I went through the schooling system as a child myself, I feel that the education system in the UK has deteriorated. It's not as good as I remember it being when I was a child. There are lots of issues at the moment with the education system in the UK. Teachers are regularly on strikes. Um, staff are not happy. Obviously, there's pay issues. So children are losing out on days on learning. Uh, and, there's, and there's battles with the, the government over uh, pay deals and things like that. So at the moment in the school systems, it's not a particularly happy place. And obviously, that then has an impact on the teaching staff. Um, so basically, when my daughter first started school, I homeschooled her obviously for the first four years of life because in the UK they don't they don't actually have to start school legally until the age of five. So um, she's a summer baby, so she was one of the youngest in her year group. Um, so for the first four years, I home educated her effectively. She knew how to read before she started school. She knew all of her numbers. She knew her math. She knew all of her shapes. She was way ahead of where she should be. And then when I when she did start school, the teachers were very impressed with her they wanted to move her up an academic year for her reading and literacy um because she was ahead of where technically she was supposed to be and at that time i thought great um the schools have identified potential and hopefully they will encourage and push her forward and then she'll be able to fulfill what she's capable of doing sadly as the years progressed um what i noticed what was happening was because she was so able she kind of got a little bit forgotten Really what tends to happen is that the, because obviously they're a class of 30 children um, to one teacher and one teaching assistant, um, what tends to happen is a lot of the focus goes on to the children who perhaps are struggling a little bit more. Um, so those who can kind of almost get a little bit forgotten, um, if you like. And I could see that she was never really progressing in the way that I expected her to do. And she was actually getting bored at school to the point now where even she's in year six, her last year of primary school, um, she's still, she's 10 years old at the moment, but to the point where it's quite sad that she asks me on a daily basis if I can withdraw her from her school um, because she doesn't really feel like she's learning anything or moving forward. So when you hear that as a parent, you're like, well, something's clearly not right. Um, so technically she's supposed to be starting secondary school in um, September. And uh, I'm just very worried that it's gonna be pretty much the same. There are issues in the secondary schools as well. There are problems with um, bullying quite badly at the moment. Um, I think the teachers are losing control. It's not a good state of affairs. And, and that's even for the academic schools. That's even for the grammar schools over here. There are still issues where even, you know, like, for example, Dame Alice Owen in the UK is a very, very sought after score. But, you know, just two years ago, they had 800 pupils walk out in protest because they weren't happy with the way the managers were managing things like racism and bullying and things like that. So what tends to happen is you get a lot of distraction from the academics, um, which is a real shame. And obviously you don't want uh, the child's mental health to deteriorate and mental health is for children is hugely a concern now in the UK. Um, there are so many children who are suffering with anxiety. A lot of them are being diagnosed with depression and a lot of them now get diagnosed with ADHD and special education needs and things like that. So there are so many sadly negative um, parts that come into secondary schools or into education generally that I, I, I know that you have child can't really thrive in that environment. So my plan is to take her out um, and then homeschool her myself. Um, she's quite keen about this. She's quite interested in doing it. Um, because she, I think she almost remembers what it used to be like. We, we always, I'm, I'm sure it's the case with many of you, we do learning as a philosophy of life. You, learning takes place everywhere, regardless of if, if you're in a school building or not. Hence why we try to travel as much as we possibly can. Um, you know, for example, we came back recently from Rome, uh, where we were visiting the Colosseum and all the historical sites that are coming through that. And then we tie that into... Um, their academics as well. So 
there, there is learning that really takes place outside of the classroom. This is what I believe. This is my, my, um, my ethos. Um, is there a question? Was no, Stella, go ahead. There is oh, a okay. question. Nagma, ma'am, we'll, we'll take a couple of questions uh, at the end of your session. Please go ahead. Sure. Okay, thank you. No problem. Um, I, I do in my day job where I teach um, adults uh, pre-hospital emergency medicine. Um, so, what you know, it's, although teaching a child is different to teaching an adult, actually, adults sometimes are not always yeah. themselves. So I think I could do her as well oh. at the same time. Oh, um, you, you know. Oh. There, there are subjects outside the curriculum that I would like to explore with her. Um, so things such as basic life support, um, which obviously is something that I have expertise in. Um, they don't, that's not part of the national curriculum in the UK. So that's not something that generally children tend to learn, but actually can save a, a life and, and is valuable, really. Um, so there's just so many things that I could expose her to that she would not get exposure to whilst in a current mainstream school so currently i'm trying to learn what's on offer what curriculums are on offer um uh, find different activities i could get her signed up into what people always tell me thankfully i've had a lot of support from family saying that they think will be fine for homeschooling but when i do speak to um other people who perhaps don't know us so well the first thing they always say is about um socialization you know how is she going to make friends how is she going to do this you know and actually i'm less worried about that because from what i see if i could get her into activities um and you know even things where she can do voluntary work uh, maybe in volunteering at um, a food bank, which we have loads of in the UK currently, or vol volunteering at um, a, a, vet's, um, a vet, she really loves her animals, or doing zookeeper days and things like that. We'll really, she'll get a lot more exposure to a wider range of people rather than just 29 other children in her class where she's kind of forced to be and really they're not allowed to speak in the lesson. They have to be quiet whilst they just listen to being spoken at as opposed to really getting involved in their learning. So this is where I'm coming from. I kind of want to give her more of a holistic learning approach. She's very, very outdoorsy. She's very academic, but likes to learn through hands-on means. Um, so my, my hope is that I will be able to give her more exposure and also in a more fun and relaxed way. Um, in the UK, we're very, very heavy with homework. I sometimes wonder if that's to supplement the fact that they weren't able to deliver the entire content in the classroom because of disruptions and things like that. Um, and that, that's, you know, an area that basically I suppose all of her work will be homework to a degree. But, you know, she would have more free time to develop and do things that she has a natural interest in, which unfortunately I, I feel that the educators in the UK not really no your voice we just lost you for a while oh sorry um yes, I was just saying, uh, can i take up a couple of questions on your behalf uh from the from the participants yes okay so so all of you by the way this is english as first language now and and i think i read stella better than i hear her but absolutely wonderful you know you know one of the most amazing things stella on behalf of everybody i i know of at least my friends Reaching Big Ben was an achievement for us when we do Cambridge. Uh, I find a lot of solace in the fact that there's a mother sitting in London who wishes to homeschool and, and, and Cambridge has a solution for her. You, you, uh, Nagma, I would love to have you chip in and tell me, you know, she was there in London some, some, some months back perhaps. Uh, but, but, but the idea is uh, Cambridge, again, for a lot of us is a destination. And when you show us, and it's a milestone like any other board, it's perhaps a choice. Uh, boards are all about choices we make. They are not our students, our children's destination. Uh, Stella, it's very encouraging to see a mother all the way from UK taking effort and time in sharing this with us. Thank so you thank much. you for that. You. There are two questions to you directed to you, and there is one question directed to Nagma, ma'am. I'll quickly take a question to you, Stella. One is there's always been a challenge with regards to writing an examination for a homeschooler. Uh, we are opting for Cambridge. Is that the same with your daughter when you chose to homeschool? It, it, sorry, I don't, you broke a little bit there. Would you mind? Uh, you can, but we, we're just losing your voice. Maybe you want to write it down in the group. Uh, but 
we are not going to hear you well. Um, was there something um, with the writing did you say? Uh, can Christina or Shazia confirm or am I the only one? Uh, or you want to type the answer to this? No, no, in the group we can't hear her now, yeah. Yes. You can't hear me. Uh, I don't know how to do that on here. Hold on. I'm doing it on my phone, not on a laptop. I understand, and absolutely fine. Uh, no, no, I, I, I think uh, you want to uh, take the answers, uh, Stella, and you can always write the answer in the group as well. Meanwhile, Nagma, ma'am, there are two questions related to you as well. So the expert should be answering. Go ahead, please, Stella. We still would love to hear you. Okay. What's the, what's the question related to the uh, Okay, the, uh, it was about the examination. Uh, how do a homeschooling mom prepare for an examination when students sometimes are not so uh, savvy to write right so obviously for examinations i'm not quite up that level because you have been 10 years old still however you have lots of exams in order to get examples for example for examples if you have lots of exams it, how do you encourage them to do it it's not easy by homeschooling by any means because actually what my daughter said to me the other day is one thing quite like what, one reason why she does like school is that there's a competitive So because she wants to the best, she likes the fact that she can get the freedom. So I suppose when she's at the she a bit of a because she won't necessarily see what her peers are capable of doing and what they're doing. Though sometimes when you are performing very, very well, it breaks the bar for other students as well. So now I'm going to do that morning, that challenge I've got yet that. Um, it's very interesting. I'd like to know that answer myself. <laughs> All right, I'll take that as as as, as a, a valid answer, but I still request you to put the answer in writing in the group. Shazia, over to you. There are a couple of questions to uh, Nagma, ma'am, and we wind up in three minutes. So we, we love our timings. Dawood, we'll take more questions or we'll Please. wind up. No, uh, there are a couple of questions for Nagma ma'am as well. If you can just take that, please. Uh, Nagma ma'am, uh, there, there are two questions directed to you and, and, and then I can ask Shazia to do the word of thanks and, and, and they've been amazing, uh, all of us, uh, you know, been... Yeah, so let me know which are the two questions that uh, I am expected to answer. Uh, could you elaborate, Nagma ma'am, the question is from Iknur, uh, that coordinated oh, science at IGCSC. Ah. Yes, yes. So, see, the thing is, you know, to be very honest, in 29 years, I haven't really seen where an ICE award has been helpful to any student. I'm being very honest here. Okay. So, to be very honest, I do not really recommend the ICE award in case schools are recommending, children are taking up. It's fantastic. It's an additional certificate. But if children don't want to take up from those five uh, different areas and wish to take up some subjects which will help them in the future, go ahead and do that. Okay, I would suggest it this way because the ICE certificate may not have as much value as having a grade in an exam or in a subject which the student may like to take up later or which may help the teacher, uh, the student in the, you know, admissions in different universities and so on and so forth. All right. So uh, the point over here is there are two questions about five subjects, right, Mr. Dawood? So to be honest, yes. the teachers, five, I would say, is safe as a minimum number. Because even in India, when we see, we have the best of five required, right? Yes. And less than that would actually really limit your students. Where will they go? I mean, they will need to have some kind of scores, some kind of marks in a certain number of subjects to apply to different schools, colleges and universities, all right? So yes, I would say five is the minimum number. And I know of students, there are schools which are offering only five. Schools in Mumbai and all which are offering only five. And there are many students who've gone on to study in good colleges like Mithibai and so on. And uh, uh, also uh, students who've gone abroad and studied with those five subjects. So five is a safe number. Less than five, I wouldn't recommend to anyone because then you'll be limiting your child. Uh, and yes, the double credit, so you you can offer coordinated science as one subject, but you will require four other subjects. 
You cannot say, no, I'm taking coordinated science and I'm taking three other subjects because coordinated science has a double credit. Right, Ms. Eknu? But if you have to then provide the marks on some uh, mark sheet or on some application form, you will be required, at least in HSC, you are required to give five marks, right? So five subjects should be taken up. Even though combined sciences means two credits, it's not going to mean two subjects, ma'am. All right? So you, if the child has taken up combined science and four other subjects should be taken up. I hope uh, I have been able to uh, answer. Absolutely. Uh, Shazi, you want to go ahead? Yeah. So the next question is from M. Asim. Uh, the question is, how important are volunteering activity at the A level? Do students need several recommendation letter to enter college? Very good question. Uh, uh, who would like to answer? I mean, I could go ahead since I am teaching A level. Should I go ahead? Yes, yes, Nagma, ma'am. It's all to you. I hate yes. Viva in school anyway. Yes. So, parents, uh, that's a very good question because there are certain colleges where uh, you need to have, uh, you know, a number of activities that you have done, right? So, there are certain colleges where the activities are very important. But then on the other hand, there are certain colleges which will not look much at activities and they will be looking at your grades, your child's grades. So depending on which colleges your uh, you know, children would like to attend, you will have to have both. To be honest, the first thing that colleges look at are obviously the grades. The activities come second, all right, to be very honest. So there are schools which offer things like IAYP, and uh, uh, there are students if they can you know if they are doing something like they are in a club or they play some musical instrument even homeschoolers for that matter i'm talking about or if they are uh, say uh, writing or something and they have uh, uh, you know the letters of recommendation that's fabulous that's fantastic but as i said earlier um much of the the importance or much of it depends on the grades it's like, you know, with the grades, the door is open to application and for admission. And then if you have supporting documents, it will help the child uh, further. I hope that answers the question. There is also this uh, subject which has been introduced, reintroduced, I should say, because it was there years ago when I began teaching CAIE, which is the IPQ. It's now called the IPQ. Uh, it's like a project that they have to do and that also seems to be very crucial nowadays students who do ipq and then they get their papers published in international journals of repute have a very good chance at you know getting scholarships and uh, admissions into colleges so that is what i can say if you'd like to add more please go ahead sir and ma'am i think that that's perfect what you said uh, I, i'll probably just take up one last question Shazam, before we end and uh, over to you where do you get the cambridge material and do you want to contact the speakers so for contacting the speakers it could be stella ma'am or nagma ma'am we only take a box of donuts before i pass the information but i'll pass your number to them and i think they all are busy uh, and they can even take it forward from there absolutely transparent but uh, the speakers are pretty occupied so share your number with me or on the group and I'll pass on, but donuts are compulsory. Uh, uh, however, where do you get the Cambridge material from? As a question was asked with Shafiq, sir. Sir, on the website, there are a lot of resources available. Uh, post this session, we'll be also posting the PDFs of the uh, the learning outcomes that I promised to do. So hopefully you can download it from the homeschoolers group and from the Cambridge website as well. So there we are. Uh, over to you, Shazia, ma'am. And my deepest gratitude to both our speakers, some amazing powerful women uh, who, who are doing some brilliant change in education system. Shazia, thank you so much. Go over to you. So I would like to extend my gratitude to all our speakers for sharing their expertise with us and to our remarkable audience for their active engagement. And we'll meet next week, same day, same time, with another new topic. Till then, bye-bye, everybody. All right. Thank all right, you. Thank you. <laughs> yes, uh, Nagma ma'am and Stella ma'am, cannot thank you enough for your time, your effort, and your being here for us. Thank you, everyone. Uh, if there thank are any more questions, you can let Mr. Dawood know, and we will try to help you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank Goodbye. you very much. Thank you. Goodbye.